Good morning, everybody. I'm Kyle Houchins. I'm a technical trainer for McNeil, and this is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. Um, good to be back. Haven't done one of these for a while, and uh, and looking forward to jumping into it today. Um, got a bit of an ambitious build. I, I always kind of, the night before, the morning of, most often the morning of, um, sit down and try and figure out what I'm going to build. And the whole reason, other than abject laziness, um, that I do that is I want to make sure that I'm building something that I haven't built before. I want to build something that I haven't seen before. And I want to put myself in the same position that you're in when somebody walks into your office, hands you a sketch and says, build this, or you draw something for the first time and you have to figure out how to build it yourself. So um, no tricks up my sleeve. We don't Julia Childs anything here. I don't have anything pre-built or stuck on a or anything. We're going to just just grip it and rip it here as far as trying to figure out how to build this thing. And the thing that I decided to build today is this um, is this RC car controller that, quite honestly, I designed in about, good Lord, how long ago was this? Probably 1996. I was digging through some old sketches and I found this. And I've always kind of liked this thing. I always kind of liked the flow of it. And um, there was a model, a physical model made of this years ago, but it's been lost to the annals of time and, and uh, I have no idea where it is. So I thought it would be fun to try and recreate it because um, at the time this was made out of foam and hand carved and all that kind of stuff. And we have much better tools than foam and hand carving now. So I wanted to talk about how you approach something like this. And the one of the important elements of this conversation is this concept of rule of three. We're going to do this in sub D, by the way. Um, I, I debated on whether to do this in NURBS or whether to do it in sub D. And I think we're going to do it in sub D because I think you know, they're faster. But the, the, the crux of this entire conversation is going to be the sub D rule of three video. And if you haven't seen this, um, it's, uh, it's definitely something I'm going to put in the... I'm going to put in the chat here so that you can check it out. Um, it's definitely worth watching, and uh, and we will definitely cover a lot of the concepts here, but that video is dedicated specifically to Rule of Three, and this one is not, so I wanted to make sure you had that information before we got started. Um, and so what we're going to do is spend just a couple of minutes talking about how to break this thing up, and in and, and the... And the the quick getting started primer on rule of three is it it only takes three points to make a corner, right? If we're doing a NURBS corner and we've got, this is our just our anchor, but this is our corner. One, two, three, and then we've got our exit point. But if we look at the corner, it's made up of these three points. And if I move these points closer, the corner gets tighter. And if I move the points farther apart, magically speaking, the curve gets softer. Sub D is the same thing. So if I get up here and I grab a cube and we look at the points of this cube, you'll see something really familiar. If we focus on this, let me turn the points on for this. And we look at this, we've got one and one, 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 right? And because this is a curve and this is just 2D, the concept translates into sub D in three dimensions as well. So if I grab this row of points, which is associated with this one, and I move it closer, the corner is going to tighten up. Same thing if I grab this row of points and move it up the corner's going to tighten up, right? If I move it the other way, obviously the opposite effect is going to happen and it's going to get softer. All right, that's the general gist of rule of three. Three points to make a corner, not five, not ten. You know, we don't make corners like this ever. We don't do that, right? We never make corners like this. And if you have curves that look like this, stop it. <laughs> stop it right now. <laughs> It's only three points to make a corner. Fix, fix your stuff. All right, that's so that's what we're going to talk about. So with that in mind, what I want to do is just do a, a little breakdown on this and talk about 
how to analyze a sketch for rule of three and identify kind of what you want to aim for when you're building stuff. And since we know it only takes three points to make a corner, now we have to start identifying where the corners are, right? There's a corner right here. There's a corner, if we're taking this in a broad sense, there's a corner right here, right? Um, and there's a corner right here, and there's a corner right here, right? So we have to start kind of looking at all of that stuff. There's actually a corner right here, right? And if we're going to be literal about this, we could say that our topology is actually something like this, right? And so we've got, if we have to bend this, I need an anchor and I need a middle and I need an end. There's going to be a little end here. So this actually one, two, three, that satisfies rule of three. Now we might need more, right? Because we might need to match topology with something else, or we might need to blend it in. But when we're laying this stuff out, that's how we start. And you'll see this when I jump into this just in a second, that to lay out this handle, I don't need a million patches in here, right? I don't need that much stuff. I need exactly one, two, three. That is literally how I'm going to start this thing. And we're going to start in a really, really gross, really, really coarse, really, really chunky level and start laying this that this thing out. And then we're going to refine as we go. And obviously we're going to need to get into it because there's you know corners and details and all that kind of stuff. But that's the basics of how we look at this stuff. And so then let's talk about the basics of starting and you know starting a rhino model. And basically what I do is I bring a picture in using the picture command. And I'll just do that really quick so you can see it. Run the picture command, pick your picture, drop it in the scene. If you need to determine scale, what I'd do is I would pick something recognizable like this knob. If I know this knob has to be three inches in diameter or whatever, I'll draw a circle that is three inches in diameter, right? And then I'll scale this drawing just using the scale tool until it matches that three inch diameter, right? So that's my three inch diameter and I'm, I'm going fast. I'm not being super precise, but you get the general idea. I know this drawing is scaled correctly so that I know that anything I'm going to do from that point on is going to work, right? So, so we've got that figured out. Now, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to move this model out of, and I'm going to stick it down here near the origin just because I'm fussy. And I want to move it out of the modeling window. And the reason that I want to do that is because if I build a model and I switch to shaded view, my drawing is getting eaten by my model, right? So I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to slide it back in space so that I can see what's going on. I can see my reference, but if I'm in the front view, I can still see what's going on because my model is going to be sitting in front of this. All right. And so the cool thing about pictures versus uh, background bitmap, bitmap, if either any of you are old enough to remember that command, um, is the fact that these are these are basically live objects. You can move them, you can scale them, you can copy them, you can rotate them. If you need a second version of it, you can just drag Gumball and tap Alt. Um, you know, we can if we we're setting up a four view, we could take this thing and rotate it and put it in, you know, this view, and we could set up a little reference cube and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, I've only got one sketch. I'm only working from the side view, so that's what I'm going to work with. So let's take this and throw it on a layer. I'm going to change the layer there, and I'm just going to double click to give this a name. And then I'm going to go to the materials tab, and you'll see that because this is a picture frame, what it does is it essentially what picture does is it takes a surface, maps an image onto that surface, and then creates a material for it. And if we go into the materials tab, we can start looking at the properties for this. And in order to model over it, I'm going to just drag this transparency slider up a little bit so that you can see what's going on, right? I'm going to fade this image out a little bit so that I can see the geometry that I'm making over it because this image has got a lot of value and lights and darks and all that kind of stuff in it. So it's, you know, my, my lines would get lost if I was trying to work on that. Last thing I want to do is just lock this image so that when I go into front view, I can work and not have to worry about this, all right? So let's jump into this. And we've got some details that we're going to want to focus on. We've got this main kind of gesture here 
we've got this this kind of delicious little S shape here that I always kind of liked as part of this model. We've got the back end of this handle, right? That's kind of topologically speaking is probably going to flow up like that. And then this handle back here has to wrap, right? This has to, you know, is going to have kind of an oval cross section about it. So rule of three states in order to get that to bend, I'm probably going to need a curve or a, I'm going to need a, a, a topology edge somewhere in here, right? So that's going to be my first one, my second one, and this is going to be my third one. And that's going to allow me to bend around that corner. So I know I'm going to need something like that. And then I know I've got a couple of shapes up here. And so this is probably going to be my top shape. And then I've got a curve here. So I'm going to need one in the middle and I've got a curve here. I'm going to need one in the middle and then I've got a curve here. And then I'm going to probably use this down here. So this is going to give me, or maybe I might even need one more, which gives me four, but you get the idea. And so what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to bend this shape, right? And then it's going to allow me to bend that shape. And that's going to give me my basic topology flow. So let's go ahead and just start doing that. And I'm going to go switch to the sub D tab. And I'm going to start with just a single face. And I just use uh, an XY count of one. And let's just, we can start at the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to drag out a face and then I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to switch to box mode. Now, I do a lot of sub-object selection when I do sub-D, and so just assume that unless I call it out, I'm holding down shift and control and dragging either an edge, a face, or a point. In wireframe, you can only drag edges or points. You can't drag the face because there's no shading information unless you drag the entire thing. So I'm going to control shift, drag this edge and I'm, or this point, and I'm going to just move it to get somewhere in the neighborhood of kind of my shape. And I can shift drag or shift control drag this entire edge and I can move it around. And I'm going to play with it a little bit. Like maybe I need to go this far because that's kind of the apex of my corner. So this is my one, one, two, and then I'm going to have another one somewhere up here. So maybe this even needs to be higher. Maybe it even needs to come up higher like that. And then I'm going to shift control click this edge and I'm going to drag this seaplane waffle, but I'm going to hold down control and you'll see that it switches from a move to an extrude. I'm going to pull this all the way up here and then I'm going to shift control drag this point and then I'm going to drag it down like this. Okay. So now what this does and when I hit tab, you'll see, look at my shape is starting to appear here, right? And I can adjust that shape here and I can start to get the shapes that I'm looking for. Now, we've got a long way to go, obviously, but you, you get the general idea. I don't have 50 faces here. I've got two with three edges, one, two, three, right? So let's look at this next one. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab the seaplane waffle. I'm gonna start dragging it and I'm gonna hold down. This is move. If I hold down control, it goes to extrude. So that's gonna be my second one. And that's gonna be my third one. And I can steal edges from other Thing. So that like this still this still qualifies as rule of three one two three because that makes up this corner but it also one two three it also makes up that corner um, sub D kind of is cool like that because it works like that and you can see I'm already starting to get this shape now my corners are are squidgy up here and I don't like that so I'm going to shift control drag those corners and I'm going to just throw a crease on them and that's going to give me that hard edge I'm going to do the same thing down here. And I'm going to decrease that, and that's going to give me that hard edge. And you can see, like, really quickly, I'm starting to get my shape. And I'm doing this all flat, by the way. The other the other video I want you to take a look at, <clears throat> if you haven't taken a look at it yet, is the um, is the paper doll hand. Um, and it's this one, this paper doll modeling technique. And YouTube makes you watch an ad, which is a bummer, but... That's the video. <clears throat> and so we're going to lay this all out flat, and then we're going to add shape later, right? So this is the first component that we've built. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go back to box mode, and I'm just going to grab this extrude dot, and I'm going to pull this out. Now, if this was a straight extrusion, I'd go all the way out here 
and I would just land this kind of something like that. But I think that I think that I'm going to want this to wrap a little bit. And right now I've already got three edges, so I could get a nice taper out of this from here. So I may I may leave that alone. I may need to add another edge somewhere, you know, right kind of in this area right in here. But for now, I'm going to I'm going to leave it like that. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to jump into is the is the base for this thing. And there's two ways we could do this. I could just grab this one and I could just drag down and then we could move this up like this and then we could start out here like this and go from there, which kind of down that path, I think I'm going to stay on that path. The other way to do this would be to actually build this as a separate piece and leave a little gap between here. And that isn't necessarily a terrible idea because we could always come back and blend this later. So if we decided we wanted to do that, I could actually take this and explode these guys and pull them off. And so the, these actually would be a separate piece now. And this little gap in here would allow us to have some sort of transition, right? So this would be our first edge, this would be our third edge, and we'd need to have a, a, an intermediary edge in between there, whether it was, um, uh, whether it was uh, you know, a blend or a fillet or however we wanted to do that. But I think I'm going to leave it attached for now, and <clears throat> that will that'll you know allow us to kind of follow along. So now we need to look at the next pieces in here, and this this piece in the front. Excuse me, I'm going to mute again. My throat is misbehaving on me. So that we need to throw you know this next little piece in here. And so I'm going to grab these two pieces. I'm just going to drag them out. Let's I grab the right, got to grab the extrude dot, pull that out, use the seaplane waffle to kind of put it where we want, Shoot. drag. And I want to kind of pay attention to the flow of this stuff, right? Topology and sub D is very, very important. And the flow of things is very important. And the, and the level of detail that you throw into something is very important. And if I switch to box mode, you can see we're kind of getting there. And this, this didn't smooth out because we creased these, so I'm going to uncrease them. And you can see now the shape at the top is starting to develop. And I'm going to uncrease this as well. Increase this as well. You can see that we're starting to kind of get there right and all of this stuff down here is creased so actually i'm going to uncrease everything except well that top and bottom let's uncrease everything and we can recrease these so you're starting to see our shapes develop and these two probably want to be creased as well so that gives us our our basic shape right so now there's a there's a secondary transition in here that's going on, right? So this is wrapping with this kind of oval cross section in this direction, and it's wrapping with this kind of oval cross section in that direction. And right now, I don't quite have enough information to make that happen. So I'm going to use this, this insert point command, and I'm going to just click up here, and I'm going to just kind of go right down the center. And I'm just going to add my intermediary point for that. So now what I can do if I go into the perspective view is I can actually grab this edge and I can start wrapping it, right? If we go to shaded view, you can see what's going on. See how that's starting to wrap like that? Without this middle edge, if I get rid of this, it's just it's just a straight line, right? If I do this, it just it's straight. It doesn't have any form to it. So I need that I need that third edge, that middle edge in order to be able to wrap. So I'm, not, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I want to finish my topology layout before I start bending things. But the, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to use this as edge number one, which means I need a middle edge and a third edge in order to represent this line. So I'm going to just not worry too much about anything at this point. And I'm going to just extrude out one and then two. And then I'm going to switch to wireframe. And then I'm going to just kind of pull this into the shape 
that I'm looking for. And I'm going to put this one kind of right at the apex. And I'm going to put this one kind of... So we're going to turn this corner and use this edge as a face. So there's going to be one edge here with an intermediary because that's going to allow that to roll. There's a, there's a certain point, like once you understand rule of three on kind of a a visceral level, you'll have this kind of <laughs> matrix-like awakening where you'll start seeing all the green ones and zeros, and and all of the all of the mysteries of how to lay out your topology. You're gonna just go, oh, I see it, <laughs> I see it all, and and that's a really exciting moment, right? And and so I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep saying it over and over again until until it starts clicking and you guys start uh, start kind of feeling it. So that is my roll there, right? My rule of three, I'm gonna put that kind of middle one right at the apex, and if I switch to smooth mode, you can see that it's starting to come around that corner. And it's not doing what we want yet because we're not, not done. We've got a lot to do here. I'm gonna take these two and stitch them. That joins that, and then I'm gonna take these two and extrude them out like that. And I'm going to stitch these two. And this edge makes up that, that break between the top part and the bottom part. And so we might need to, you know, peel these off and then do a bridge or something like that. But for the time being, I want to lay this stuff out as, as simply as possible. I don't want to overthink it. I don't want to make too much stuff. I don't want to make too many edges and all that kind of stuff. Now, I've got a corner here that I need to turn. And so my original thought was thinking that I needed to come up this way. And I might actually need another edge in here. So I'm going to throw one in there in order to get that because I don't think I can get both. And in Rhino Sub D, you don't need to chase the edge all the way through. But for the, for the time being and for simplicity's sake, I am actually going to do that because that allows me to kind of start coming around the corner here and this out. Now, if you were doing this in NURBS, you would already be, you know, deep into trimming and blending and making surfaces and trying to figure out how to get your transitions to do what you want it to do and all that kind of stuff. And... And that's great. I'm, I'm never going to discourage anybody from, from doing NURBS modeling. But the sub-D, when you finally get the handle of how all this stuff kind of starts to come together, it really makes modeling fun, and it makes it easy. And the main thing it makes it is extraordinarily fast. And you'll see that we're going to do a bunch of layout here, and it seems kind of tedious at the at the beginning, but you're going to get to a point where we're going to we're going to finish this, and all of a sudden it's just going to click, and it's going to come together, which is really kind of a fun moment. So now I've got to figure out how to get this connected to this, and I can stitch these two points, no problem. But I've got this I've got this segment in here that doesn't match, and so I think what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add another row of faces in here. And that gives me a very simple, very easy to kind of manage hit tab. You can see, lo and behold, this thing is starting to take shape. Now, we've got some details that we don't have in here. That's fine, we can always refine that later. We've got some, some stuff to manage down here. We can always manage that later. But the end result is, we're actually very close to having this to the point where we can now start, you know, the main form is dialed in and we can start, you know, uh, we can start uh, um, detailing this thing and starting to figure out kind of what's what's going on next. All right, so let's go back to, let's go back to box mode and let's add this last little detail. Again, because this has an inflection in it, right? It's got a curve here. This is gonna be my first edge. I'm gonna need a second one and then I'm gonna need a third one. So I'm gonna take, these three edges, and I'm going to just extrude straight down once. I'm going to extrude straight down again, and then I'm going to grab this edge, relocate my gumball to here, and then just click zero and scale it. That's going to flatten it out, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this edge. Double click to get it, 
gumball relocate to here, scale it to zero, and that's going to flatten it out. Oops, let's do it right this time. And then I need to decide kind of how I'm going to handle this, this discontinuity down here. So for the time being, I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to pull this down and make sure that I don't have anything crossed or anything like that. But what I can do now is I can pull this shape in. I can tune that transition and figure out how to go from there. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to grab these two edges. I'm going to pull them up a little bit and then I'm going to grab these two edges and I'm going to extrude again, control shift click to get those sub object edges. And then I'm going to extrude again. And I, I usually extrude so that I miss a little bit so that I don't get stuff laying right on top of each other. Cause then it makes it easy to grab this and go stitch. And it makes it easy to grab this and go stitch. That way you don't get don't get lost. Now I can take and I can either override my sketch and I can have this be the bottom, right? Like that. And I'm gonna grab these guys and I'm gonna just scale it just a little bit like that. So that can be my new bottom. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's the way this ends up resolving is this is going to roll over and, and, you know, make the bottom. We can always figure that out later. I can stitch these. We can add, remove, use an end gone or anything like that. So um, the, and that's going to give us kind of what we need in order to be able to do that. Now I need, there is a little detail right here. I may cheat with that and just add an end gone by adding a single point right there and just pulling that into a five-sided surface. We can always refine that later, so I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. I hit tab. You can see, lo and behold, the thing has kind of developed, and I'm going to crease this one. That gives me that sharpness. And then I can start just kind of refining my shapes, right? And I always say model in box mode, refine in smooth mode, because it helps you to be able to keep track of you know how these things go and you can see that like the forms on this probably are going to need some adjusting and things like that but we've got the basics of what our model is going to do i'm going to increase this one and that's the basic layout start very easily refining our shapes and you always have to make that decision like is the sketch the driving force here or is the model the driving force here I tend to try and make my decisions in 3D because the models tend to, you know, be more accurate instead of, instead of my instead of my coffee jitter hand sketches. So now let's start adding some shape to this. And I like to do this in in shaded view because this is kind of where the fun begins. So now I can grab some edges and I can start saying, well, I'm going to pull this around and make this edge. I'm going to grab this point. I'm going to pull it in, and then I'm going to grab this point, start just tucking that detail in, right? And that's starting to do kind of what I wanted it to do. Maybe this point is line up with that point. And this edge, maybe we wrap this edge just a little bit. And because we kept it simple, right these are all easy things to manage now we can start doing things like do i need these edges if i pull those out what happens to the model you know look at it and say did that do what i wanted it to do or not in this case i kind of like that highlight that's appearing right there that feels like kind of a cool thing for your thumb to be able to grab a hold of so i'm going to leave it and then let's grab this entire edge let's pull this in like that. And it probably is going to want to go in this far, so I'm going to snap it to that. And then this edge right here feels like it's going to be kind of flat, but I also feel like this, this edge up here needs a transition. So maybe what I'm going to do is let's mirror this 
for the time being. And actually, I'm going to go to top view and put this around the origin so that I can use mirror effectively. And I don't have a dimension for how big this thing is, so or how wide it is, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm just going to mirror this, and I, I did mirror this with history, so I'm actually going to kill my history because I don't want it to I don't want it to historically update. And so now I can start doing things like I can take this edge here, oops, two ends, and then double click in the middle in order to get fill it in. And I can either bridge this or I can stitch it. And if I stitch it, I get that I actually kind of like. So I think I'm going to roll with that. And then this back here, I can decide whether I want that to kind of taper out like that or whether I want it to be flatter. If I want it to be flatter, what I would probably do is, is extrude, if we go back to box mode, would probably extrude the edges out and then maybe make a four-sided surface right there or something. Let's see. Let's see what happens if we bridge this bridge. And I'm going to do it with two segments so that I get the center line. And I could actually just stitch this. Let's do that. Ooh, don't hate that at all. quite a bit. So let's just pull it back. I like how the forms are developing in here. Shape might want to bend, so I'm actually going to use a bend deformer. That edge. And I'm just going to bend up a little bit. this point cree is is that gives me a sharp edge we're starting to kind of get basics of our shape right now if i want this top edge to be fairly sharp which i think i do i think what i'm going to do i'm actually going to bridge uh, I'm going to bridge these two edges together. Notice I didn't grab the end of it, right? And I'm going to let that go like that, but I'm actually going to come back and increase these. I'll let that kind of even bring it down here. Like that. Maybe I'll even increase this point. Nope, don't like that. A little crazy on this. I actually kind of like that shape a little better. In fact, I might even want to crease this edge up here. Basic shape back. Now, there's always this temptation when you're doing sub D, like, I have to add every single piece to the geometry and it has to be perfect and sub D my sub D model has to be perfect and all that kind of don't don't listen to that noise in your head. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can leave creases on our sub D model and actually convert this stuff to NURBS and uncrease it later. You know, we can add fillets to this later. We can do all of that form development and stuff, but we don't have to do that here. Right? And so I may actually add an edge here because I think I think I want to do one more edge from here to here, like that. Give me the ability to be able to do this. I think I want. All right, look at how beautiful that's starting to develop. All those forms and everything, the highlights and everything. Like try try and do that in nerves. <laughs> you <laughs> so let's get sorted out so let's go in here and i'm going to go all the way to the bottom and double click there 
I'm gonna go there. Double click to fill in. Let's bridge this and just see what happens. And in this case, I'm actually pretty okay with the way that went down. And what I can do is I can then now start manipulating this transition by simply grabbing this. This is the this is the argument. For keeping your models really simple. Look how easy this is to manage. And because it's all makes sense, right? One, two, three, corner, one, two, three, corner, one, two, three, corner. It's all very, very easy to manage. You're not getting lost. Everything makes sense. You can see exactly where the problems are if you get problems. Look at that. Eee, I like that a lot. All right, let's bridge these two get together. I think I'm going to just, I think I may just do a single segment between here. So let's do bridge. Eh. What's one look like? Actually, I kind of like having that second one in there. Never mind. We'll do two. That way it gives me this and I can control this. Check this out. Shift. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can make that transition do what you want to do because we've got all sorts of things. Maybe we don't need this anymore. Maybe we can get rid of this. Maybe we can get rid of this edge loop. And if we can, we should. Right? Because it's going to keep it simple. But I think I, I think I actually want that. And look at all those forms are developing. All that, all that stuff is is coming together really well. And I think I might crease this one too. Is this kind of like dispelling some of the mystery of sub D? I know I, I get a lot of requests on tech and people are like, oh my God, sub D doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, it actually really does make sense as long as you follow the rules. Pull this in. I kind of like the idea of pulling this in all the way around like that. Any questions so far? Chat's been very quiet. Don't don't hesitate to to jump in on chat if there's a question that you have or anything like that. I'm totally down for answering questions. I think I kind of like the idea of this being almost like a little base. I'm pulling away from my sketch a little bit, but I kind of like the idea of this having like this kind of secondary little kunk that you set it down on. And then that also gives me the opportunity to get this edge. I'm going to scale this in one direction. It seems counterintuitive, but I'm actually going to scale this like that and then like that. And if I need that to be sharper, I could always add another edge next to it. And I, I like doing this in box mode because it's much easier to control. And you can see that that just sharpens right up. And if I want it to fade, I can get rid of half of it. That sharpens at the front and fades at the back. You got to highlight wiggles a little bit, so we'd need to mess with that. Maybe we even get rid of this guy. And that gives us that sharpness up there without losing the shape of our highlight. See how this is developing? Am I the only one that gets super stoked on this stuff? <laughs> I'm like sitting here going, yay! <laughs> yay. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's because I built so much of this stuff in the past where I had to do it the old way, which was just murderously painful. All right, I deleted this edge here. See this little lump? I didn't like that, so I'm going to just delete that edge. And I do this process quite a bit where I'll actually... Delete something, see what it changes. I'd love to say that I know what I'm doing, but a lot of it is seriously trial and error. That little thing that just developed in there, that little sharpness that fades out. Ooh, I kind of love that. What happens if I get rid of this? Nope. <laughs> what happens if I get rid of this? Nope. Cool, huh? It's just like daytime. All right, now there is a little detail here that I missed, and it you know it remains to be seen like 
And, and if I was, if I was following like, you know, standard design practice, I'd probably print one of these at this point right now, I wouldn't even go any farther than this. And I would, I would print one, you know, grab it in my hand and see what it felt like. But let's assume that this is for like a, you know, some kind of presentation rendering or something like that. I like that better. See how that's kind of developed nicely? And this piece I can take find my shape again. There's a, my, my philosophy with this stuff is always delete, 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 delete until the model breaks and then put the last thing that you took out back. You want to, you want to keep this stuff as light as you possibly can. If you do that, it'll make it so much easier to keep track of where all your shapes are going that a much happier little modeler. Ross, happy little modelers. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the rest of these shapes. Now, this this shape keeps kind of poking me in the eye. I keep wanting to I keep wanting to try and figure out how to manage that. So let's take a look at it and figure out what we're going to do. And that shape basically is going to require us to kind of bridge kind of these two faces together. And what we're probably going to want to do is get a hole in here somehow. And we might want to do that simply by adding another row of points. If we go here like that, and then I'm going to, I'm going to just hack this in right now, but we're, we're going to go back and Put the symmetry back in later once we get it about where we want. So that gives us that. And I can also do this like that, right? So that gives us this ability to be able to pull this point out like that. Let's see what that does. Eh, ish. Kind of got us there ish. I don't like what's going on with the topology there, so we need to figure out how to do this a little bit a little bit better. Um probably would want to run these edges down a little bit farther like this. That I'm okay with. Even though it softened that back up a little bit, I kind of feel like that looks okay. And this edge and this edge probably need to come apart like that. That's looking a little better. Let's flatten that edge out. And you can see the asymmetry in this, and I'm not super concerned about it to be honest. I'll just throw it back in later. Now we've done some we've done some topology messing around here, so. As I'm and I'm doing this in smooth mode, which I violating my own rules here. Um, typically, what I want to do is not do this kind of stuff in smooth mode. I'd go in box mode to make sure that I haven't made a mess. And in this case, it looks like I'm in pretty good shape if I put this in shaded mode. What I don't want to do is see stuff like this. See this? That's a mess. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to straighten that out. And I've got a four-sided surface back here, but I don't re actually it's two three-sided, never mind. I don't really need that, so I'm going to just stitch it and make it go away. And that will resolve a little bit of that mass. And then I can always you know, 
worry about what it's doing later. So it looks like we're a lot closer to our art now. And the only thing is that detail is kind of soft, and we really kind of wanted that detail inset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, and I'm actually going to insert edges on both sides, and I'm also going to do this box mode. Same thing over here. And I know this is, you know, for everybody who's standing here screaming at their screen going, it's asymmetrical, it's not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> and I'm going to take these two edges, and I'm just going to pull them in a little bit. And that should give us that detail. There it is. Now, do I need to take these all the way out? Maybe not. So let's grab these and let's get rid of them. And even these two, I don't know. Let's get rid of those. Remember, delete until your model falls apart and then put it back. A lot of times I'll throw stuff in and I don't necessarily know if I need it or not. And I'll just pull it right back out if I don't. But this does the topology we need in order to be able to you know, dictate that detail, which I kind of think. If we go to rendered mode, and off on that, I'm pretty good about that all over. So let's fix the asymmetry that we had. Any questions so far? Uh, somebody said, "What about dimensions?" We talked about dimensions at the beginning when I when I we I picked this knob and I'm just picking an arbitrary thing. I don't know what the dimensions are in this thing, um, but let's just say this knob is three inches in diameter and we know that. Um, I put a circle in the in the model space and then scaled the drawing so that this circle matched that circle and so that I know my drawing is approximately the correct scale. Now we can soften these edges if i grab all of these edges if i wanted to do this in sub d i can throw and i'm in box mode we can throw a bevel on here and we can bevel this stuff and then grab everything and uncrease it and that gives us our sharpness but lets us keep our lets us keep our edges and there's a little a little wonk going on in here, so let's fix that. Stitch these all together. Control shift clicking, and then I have a hotkey set up for stitch, so you can even stitch a few things at a time if you want. I can do this and this and this, and I can stitch those and collapse them all. That gives us a much better result. And it looks like we've got some nudge down here to deal with. This is why I like box mode, because you can look at this stuff and see exactly what's going on and say, well, that was inverted. Ooh, look at that. We don't want that. Let's pull this. Ah, there's an edge, a point hiding in here. So let's pull this guy forward. Figure out where these guys are going. So I'm just going to kind of pull them out in space so I can figure out who they belong to. Looks like I've got some stuff stacked up on top of each other. This is why I like box mode. You can sort this stuff out. Whereas if you were trying to do this in smooth mode, so now this is starting to become apparent. This is where the corner is. And so I can grab this edge and I can just drag it out of the way so that I can sort it out. And then I can go back point by point and put it back where it needs to be. Make sense? That way I'm not trying to like sort through a whole pile of stuff and figure out what goes where. Like this guy is like super misbehaving. I 
and it looks like something is folded on top of each other. Ah, all right, so all this stuff should kind of come down to this corner. So let's stitch this one and this one. And then let's stitch this and this. There. And, oops. I'm going to let that go down to a triangle, and then I'm going to put these two like that. Let's see what that did. That's a little messy. So let's see if we can clean up. Let's see if we stitch these two. And I don't like that edge. It's an edge. That edge. And let's see. I think I would like this these two edges to chase all the way around. So let's let's do that. I think I would like this edge chase all the way around there. So let's just add it. I'm going to snap to there. And I'm going to snap to there. And then I'm going to add a point here. Pull that down like that. And then if we go to wireframe, I'm going to add an edge from there to there. Let's see what that looks like. I like that better. Don't like that edge, though. All right, so now that we've got some topology that, we, that we're kind of happy with, and in this one, I might, even, I might even change that one to wrap around. In fact, let's just get rid of that for now. Um, let's reflect this and that's going to give us a symmetrical model so we're going to fix the we're going to fix the symmetry issues that we have and that just goes and very quickly does it now the cool thing about this is it's it's now this is actually in symmetry mode so as we model we're modeling across the center line and in this case you know it's actually kind of doing what i wanted to do but i might want to chase this edge around so let's go to box mode and let's just chase this guy from here to here to there i like that better might want to get rid of this one I think that's pretty much doing what I wanted to do. So let's throw a material on it and just take a peek. We throw paint on here. We're at 10. I want to try and wrap this up in like the next 15 minutes. But you can see, and if I get rid of this reflection so that we can see this thing, we've got a really, really nice form developed in just under an hour because I blabbed a little bit at the beginning. We've got it open at the bottom. I'm not super worried about that because I can always either throw a sub D plane through there or um, or a NURBS plane when we convert it or whatever we want to do. But that gives us, you know, pretty much the basis of this thing. And the cool thing about this, and, and this is what I would do at this point, is I would actually close up the bottom of this and then I would throw this through a printer and I would hold it in my hand. 
and see how it feels. And because it's sub D, if we need to modify something, it's super easy to do. We can just go ahead and start dragging edges around and, and fix it. And that's, that's the, one of the beautiful things about sub D is, is we can, you know, do those kind of, kind of modifications and really end up with something that, you know, fits and works and, and is, and is really pretty fantastic. So here, what I would do is, um, I would probably simply just grab these edges and I would just leave this, this. And I'm going to do that with two segments. And I am going to crease this because I just want that edge to be hard. And then that looks like I can one more edge in there. Let's do that. Two, three, four, two, three, four. Oop, got one too many. See, that count didn't make sense. Bridge with a crease and then we're going to stitch that and crease that this front here that gives us a hard item and then for this i'm simply going to just take this and i'm going to stitch too, but i'm going to make my stitch location this end and then i'm going to crease this edge Increases. creases, I try to stay away from creases usually. In this particular case, it works good for this cap. And then I can always, once I convert to nurse, this edge actually could, I could throw a fillet on it if I wanted to. Not, not a big deal. If I needed a fillet in sub D, all I'd need to do is simply bevel it. Go here and I say bevel and I just add a little bevel to it. Like that. Now I would need increase everything and that gives me my sharpness. I use creases as a way to identify that are going to have fillet at some point and then either make the decision to bevel it in sub D or not bevel it in sub D. It just depends on what, I, what I'm feeling at the time. Okay. So that, that base is, is that and let's take and let's make we're going to sub D part and I'm going to copy this, this layer and I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to hide this. Thing. I'm supposed to get to the layer, not move it. There we go. And so I've always got a record of this. I've always got that I've saved and I'm actually even going to lock that layer so that I can't mess with this. And then I'm going to run to NURBS. I'm going to run this and let it convert to an herbs object. I'm going to do my sub D. So this is now a closed poly surface. This is something that you could send to SolidWorks. This is something that you could print. This is something that you could, you know, who you want to do. So I'm going to develop this a little bit further because now this is just a regular, a regular Rhino model. And we can do things like we can start adding trigger points and the knob, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's do the knob because that's one of the main features, and this is kind of a cool way of doing this. Instead of just revolving this, which you can do, um, there is a way to do this with space that's nice and interactive. And I just isolate it the time being, and this should have caps on it. It doesn't, so let's cap it. And what we're going to do is I'm just simply going to draw where my transitions are going to be. So there's going to be a transition there. There's going to be a transition here. There's going to be a transition here. Let me get rid of that. There's going to be another one here. Now, could you revolve? Absolutely. Absolutely no reason why you wouldn't do that. But I want to show you this because it's kind of cool. Revolve, you have to kind of predict 
what the shape is going to be from your profile curve. Some people are really good at that. I'm not. <clears throat> so let's go to split face. Let's spell it right. <laughs> so, we don't want to do that. I'm going to use curves. And I'm going to just drag all these curves. I'm going to split this. It's going to keep it a poly surface. This is still, it hasn't unjoined anything. This is still a solid poly surface. But this out. Now I can do things like grab this surface edge and I can just pull this. Doop. And then I can pull this one. Eh, eh, what do you think? Check this out. If I want to do a little thing here, I can just right. That's cool. Look at it. You can make your decisions in 3D and say, oh, well, I don't really like that relationship. So I'm going to pull this out. I like that relationship about a lot better, but this is now too set. So I'm going to pull this back out. And then you can refine this even further and do things like, you know, all the other fun stuff that we normally do in NURBS, which is like, you know, we can do bevels on things and things like that. Start adding some more detail here. But it's a very interactive, like kind of fun way to, to interact with your model and make decisions in 3D instead of, you know, just kind of relying on the curves and I it feels a little bit more kind of artistic to me as far as being able to to um, you know develop in a way that you want it to develop and check this out so this thing is dead flat and I don't really look flat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the degree on this and I'm going to change it from degree two to degree three and I'm going to grab the center row here scale it out a little bit now some of you who are really paying attention will see that the edge of this has changed a little bit. and you're correct because the degree two versus degree three in order to get a like, circle uh, in degree three you need you know more points and stuff. so what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to match surf back Typing. I'm just going to do it position. And it can't do it because I need a little bit of fine. So we're going to have to add some more points in there. And this goes right back to where it was supposed to be in place. Up. Oh. Close poly surface. Go if we want to add some fillets on there or whatever. We can do that later. And We need to add our little axle dude in here. So we can scale this down. Shoot it out. Love modeling when you don't have to touch modeling. That's our wheel. We can decide whether it's too big, too, you know, or whatever we want to do, right? So there's that. We've got our details in the top here. I'm going to just lie, cheat, and steal those. I'm going to copy, paste. Isolate, I copy, and I'm going to just grab this shape out of here like that. And then I'm actually going to, I'll wait until I get my wheel back before I, before I do this, but I'm going to just trim this. And grab this entire thing and I'm going to scale it just a little bit. Like that. Bring my original model back and see how that relationship works. I think that works out all right. Maybe, maybe a little, maybe a little big in the back. So let's put in a little bit like that. And then I need to add the transition between these two. So because this is a NURBS object. We can do really easy things like this. I'm going to come in here and build a gap. 
If you've watched many of my videos in the past, you're familiar with this idea. And I'm going to trim this off. And then we're going to just blend surf between these two. And I'm going to go tangency. Nobody needs to get crazy. And I'm going to add some shapes just to help it find its way around these corners. The rest of that looks good. Join. See how nicely sub D and nerves are working together? Check this out. So now we've got our detail in there. add that secondary detail wheel in this kind of like curve shape I'm going to use the center of that to dictate kind of where that lands so this is a shape and I don't want to cut all the way through that I want this actually to end down here so I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to grab these two, and this is a tool I like that a lot of people don't know about called Curve Boolean. I'm going to delete all the input, and then I'm just going to click here, and it's going to keep just that little section of model. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, let's see, am I going to split? How am I going to do this? Let's do it. Oh, let's do it the fun way. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to make a cookie cutter. I'm going to tap it. This is a solid object. And then I'm going to Boolean subtract. I'm going to keep my stuff, right? I'm going to keep, I'm going to subtract from this using this, and I'm not going to delete the inputs. And that's going to give me that. Then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to just pull it in a little bit like that. Just squish it in. And then I'm going to actually move it down just a tiny hair like that, just to nip off the top of it. Let's do it like that. Does that look with our wheel? Mm. Let's make it concentric so that we don't make everybody mental. And then we'll now subtract this from that. And we've got our little detail built in there. That's a super effective trick. I use that all the time. And if I wanted to clip it through the top, I would probably you know, change that shape a little bit so that it gets that little notch through the top. But I actually kind of just like it like that. I know I had it differently on the sketch, but. That's the beauty of 3D. We make our decisions in 3D. All right, let's make our let's make our our on-off switch. I'm gonna just do that in. Let's do it in sub D. Why not? We got a good thing going with sub D. Um, let's do it. A, let's do it a different way. Let's do it with a curve. We're gonna change this to sub D friendly, and I'm gonna just draw my shape like this. And then I'm going to extrude it out, which is going to give me a sub D part. And then because I need to go inverted curve this way, I guess convex this way, or concave this way, convex that way, concave this way. Excuse me, I need to add one more edge on either side. So I want to add one there, and I want to add one there. I can just do this. Boop. Uh. <laughs> it's almost like cheating. <laughs> uh, so happy, but it does. It's so for so long the other way that it's just like it just makes me giddy when I see stuff like this, and I'm like, holy moly! All right, let's so let's move this kind of where we want it, and then I'm gonna just simply extrude this, Boop. like that. And that gives me that shape. 
and then I'm going to reflect this, even though it's not the right, you know, it's not the right width. I'm going to reflect it just because I'm lazy. And I want to get the whole shape. And then I'm going to just scale it back to its normal spot and then kind of drop it in the middle. Let's get rid of the creases on this. Might want to keep the creases on the bottom, but let's get rid of these. I told you which ones I wanted you to do. Helps if you click the right things. There we go. So that's the softness of our button. If we needed it to be a little sharper, that we would just add, we would add, I'm going to get rid of the reflection here. We would just add another edge right through the center here. See how that sharpens it up? Then we can even decide, like, does the, is the sharpness variable? Does it have a little tuck under here for our thumb? I kind of always like that. Well, that's a lot more interesting, right? So we'll have that. Let's add the little piece that sticks out of here. Boop. But it doesn't have like a weird gap underneath it for the rendering. And then if we wanted that to be softer, we could bevel it. Just a little bit. And then uncrease everything. I, people ask me all the time, why do you crease it and then bevel it and then uncrease it? It just helps me visualize kind of where the bevel is going to go and make sure that it's doing the right thing that it's supposed to do. So that shape. And then basically all we need to do is the whip antenna. We're close. 10, 12. Will he make it? I'll probably do this just strictly out of NURBS, although <laughs> it is so easy to do in sub -B. Let's do it in sub -B. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, and then our direction, we're going to do it this way, like that. This, about like that. This edge, we're going to slide it. Like that. And I'm going to add an edge here. Like that. And grab all of these faces. Let's see. Here's a fun trick. Shift, Alt, right mouse button rotates the screen and allows you to be able to drag something. If you go back to perspective view, you get it back. Out like that. That gives us our little tip. Trick it. That. Add our little bend to it. Probably would get rid of this one. Don't need it. Get rid of that one. And let's sleep these faces. And we're going to grab this edge loop and extrude it. Let's start dragging, hold down shift, hold down control. And it's going to extrude the face out. Then drag, hold down control. We can extrude another face out. Start dragging, hold down control, and that gives us our last one. Shift drag, make that a little bigger. Might add an edge or slide this edge. Sharpen this up. And let's go to wireframe because this is bank. And we're going to rotate it. Uh, 
about right and then we just need to add our little trim knobs and I'm gonna just cheat I'm gonna copy paste drag this over scale it down nice And then just make sure they're positioned correctly. And they probably want to be a little deeper. All right, let's see how we did. That's not bad. Throw a few materials on here. I'm going to just use super basic materials. Plastic, that's going to be black. Okay, we're going to frost it a little bit so that it's matte. Assign it to that and that. And I'm going to assign it to this whole thing. And then we're going to go back and sub-object assign different materials. Let's get some metal. And I'm going to frost that a little bit. And then let's sub-object select that and like, I don't know, maybe this. Right-click Assign. How's that look? I don't like that. Let's do this one instead. Oh, it's so much more fun than how it used to be. This used to be so painful to be able to do this stuff. <laughs> All right, so now we've got kind of our controller. That, and, you know, we could even do things like we could start breaking this up in material. So if we go to shaded mode, and we said there actually is a really kind of a convenient material break with the way these surfaces, this topology is laid out. Check this out. Grab all of this stuff. So I'm going to put back onto that. It's like cheating. And if we didn't like that, we could split this surface right down here. And we could add a texture to it if we wanted to. Like if we added a little, uh, if we added a little speckle texture and we made it extra small. When you zoom in here, you'll see that that texture is on there. Maybe we make it a little bigger. So that gives it a little bit of detail. Bottom of this thing is black. And, you know, you can always, I'm just using the topology that's there, but you could always go in and just split this. Like if you didn't like this thing, this whole thing being black, we would simply just do this. If we just do... Face with a curve. And then, oop, didn't do it. Let's pull it out. Yeah. Now we just make this red. Why well, you misbehave? That's odd. Hmm. Very strange that that's not accepting that. Do 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 do. do. It's 
got a it's it's not letting go of that sub object selection that's odd <clears throat> All right. Weird. There we go. Hmm. Well, there you go. Yeah. That is how you would do it if this bug hasn't reared its head, but that for some reason is not allowing me to remove that material. Very odd. I've never seen that happen before. Yeah, it's not letting go of the sub-object sub assignment. Let's see if we explode it. Curious. And rebuild it with the same material properties and see if it'll let go. Yeah, there it is. Show you. Clearly there's an issue there that I will write up later, but that would be how you would do it, assuming that the world is a fair and just place and that bugs didn't rear their heads when you're in the middle of a live demo. <laughs> but there you have it. Any questions as to what we've got here? Any questions about what's going on or anything like that? 10.22, not bad. I was aiming for 10.15, so. And then if we wanted to throw together a rendering of this, we would simply just throw this into ray trace mode and call it a day. Fantastic. All righty. Thanks for joining me. My name is Kyle Houchins, Techno Trainer for McNeil. This is Getting Started with Rhino for Windows. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.